Welcome back. Today we are going to pick up with, uh, oh, where we left off last time. We'll kind of start with some curtain wall stuff, but today we want to spend a lot of time looking at floors and how floors interact with walls and how you can control the boundaries of floors. And we also want to be looking at roofs and really a lot of the nuance to how you can create roofs that slope from different sides, control which sides things are coming up from, and do roofs that don't strictly uh, that aren't strictly composed of uh, planes that are made of rounded shapes or things that can be extruded. So for example, like a barrel vault or just something where we have an interesting shape that's not a flat plane, we want to create a roof out of that. So we've got a lot of good stuff to cover today that will hopefully be useful for you as you attack the assignment. Just so you know, in terms of the assignment, what's going on, there will be an announcement coming out, I think, later today, which is going to talk about office hours starting tomorrow afternoon, some on Saturday, then just all through the coming week of times when TAs and I will be hanging out here in this room being available to answer different questions. So there will be an advertised schedule of stuff. So please take advantage of all that time. Um, there will be some, a lot of hours towards you know, Wednesday and Thursday as we get closer, but don't wait that long. If you can, go ahead and kind of come in earlier and just knock it out. It would be very, very helpful if, for example, you could go through and if you would get the, what I'll call the main modeling of your assignment, get the building kind of in good shape by the time you show up in class on Tuesday, rather than starting with one of my dumb files, you could start with one of your files and we could create the views and the different things you need to complete the assignment using your own model and get your questions answered right in class. So if you can, get your model looking pretty good. You know, even come in with questions. Oh, I need a countertop that makes an L shape and has a curve in it, but I don't know how to do that. We can answer some of those questions and use your modeling questions as the example that we show everyone, because everyone else has those same questions too. Okay, so please, if you can, get things done. And again, because of the way we're modeling, you don't really have to worry about if your model's not quite complete, we can still make the views, put them on sheets, and then as your model gets better through the next two days, the sheets will just update themselves with the new information. So, yeah, it's sort of a good way to do it. Okay, to also assist you with this, some people were asking about, oh, just a library of more materials and what's available. And out on the K drive, the K drive, which you can get to either when you're here plugged in. So if you have a thumb drive handy, go ahead and feel free to copy this down. Or even from your uh, dorm rooms, you can get to, uh, or in residence halls, you can get to the K drive here. Again, to get to the K drive, you know, it's this thing where, you know, there's two different ways. If you're on the Mac, I say connect to server, and I say connect to CEE server. That's how you get, it onto, you get to it on the Mac side. If you're on the PC side, it's the, uh, oh, let me show on that side too, just out of fairness. You get to uh, Windows Explorer, and you type into the Windows Explorer bars, CEE server, I'm going to say, instead of going to CE 110 files, go to 110 apps, because where this library is located is on the apps side. In the K drive, which is CE 110 apps, you'll find under there, it's Revit libraries, and underneath Revit libraries, you'll find CEE 110 editions, our own special little thing, and you'll find our special library for the class, some other libraries that are helpful. And if you go into here, you'll find that I just have a lot more components. So for furniture and just all sorts, you know, for plumbing fixtures, I got a lot more stuff out there. And it's really just a collection of what I've been, you know, I do a lot of residential work. I just, as I find things over the last 10 years, I just keep on throwing them into this library. So, you know, more interesting windows, you know, seven types of pianos. <laughs> There's, also, you know, there's lots of stuff out there, so feel free to take advantage of that. You can download that, again, through the web, or if you happen to be here in class and you have a thumb drive, do it that way. It's a big library. It's about half a gigabyte, so it, it, it'll be quicker to copy just here onto a thumb drive. Okay. So again, you don't need to be using that library, but at some point during the quarter, you probably want to copy it down so you have access to all those cool things. And then as you find interesting things, I know as you go through the class, you're going to find really cool parts out on Revit City or different places, just even parts you create. It'd be great if you would contribute them back into the pool so that we can all just be helping each other out. So it's very, very open source, very organic about how we want to do this. Okay, so any just sort of general questions about the assignment before we dive on in? Okay, I posted a new version uh, that was openable in 2010, so thank you for people who reported that I'd saved it under a newer version, so they were having troubles with that. But if you haven't opened it yet, try to do it sometime tonight. Just see if you can pull it down onto your machine, just 
get it open, throw three or four walls down, just to sort of say you've done that much so far, and just you know, work through the mechanics. Because then we can say, okay, that part works, and then we can start working on your designs. There were a couple things. How, how observant of you to notice. Actually, I did go through and um, on some of the different, like the elevation views, and I, I, I did some cropping and cleaning things up to make the, uh, that file a little bit easier to work with. So if you haven't started it yet, get the newer one. No, if you already did the old one, it just means when it's time to crop and shade views and things like that, you got a little more work. I sort of built in a little more helping starting points. But now if, you've already, if you're already in there, just stay where you are. Okay, don't, there's no reason to sort of go back. Okay, so again, watch out for office hours. An announcement will be coming out about that. Take advantage of that. You get lots of help available. And the first assignment's always the toughest, not so much in terms of being a hard assignment, but just working through the mechanics of getting through all these different things. Oh, and I got an email question about like what the difference is between a two-unit assignment versus a four-unit assignment. And there really isn't a lot of difference on this assignment because it's kind of, it's a basic little building. And we can say, oh, for the two-unit people, don't submit the room schedule, and the four-unit people do. But that's such a small difference. It's, you know, it's like a 15-minute difference. It won't really make much of a difference. That distinction between two and four units will become much more meaningful <laughs> when we launch into something that's a little bit bigger. So if, if everyone could try to complete uh, what's going on in the assignment listing, that would be fantastic. I'll also send out an email kind of giving a little bit of guidance about that. But it's really not going to be a very big difference, at least for this first one, because everyone sort of just has to go through that experience of putting together a model and putting it on sheets. This is sort of everyone, eh, common experience for everyone. 